Good morning, everybody. We're back out here today at Pole Barn Garage. We're gonna try to get this red LTD running. It's been off the road since 1995. Eh, not too long, you know, 28 years. So I think this thing's a 77. I actually have a title for this one. So if it could be salvaged, maybe we salvage it. I doubt it. It's not in terrible shape. It's just these cars aren't worth anything. Oh, this one has a back bumper. That's rare. So I understand this to be a very highly optioned car. It's supposed to have four wheel disc brakes on it. And it has the reserve fuel tank in the trunk. So that's two gas tanks we'll have to bypass. And inside, well, I don't know, because nothing opens, including the hood. Uh, that's been stuck since we did the cop car LTD over here. Step one, let's pull that grill out and get in there and try to get the hood open, see what we're even working with. Right. I threw the front bumper away yesterday. Oh. But, uh, you know, I don't think there was much to attach it to. Nice. Yeah, let's save that. That grill's in good shape. So these have the pole cable. And, oh, look at that. See that thing? That's an auto dimmer. Oh. It's a photo eye. It sees lights coming at it and it'll automatically dim your headlights. It looks like there's some kind of cover over the latch assembly so you can't just reach in there and steal it. I got an idea. We couldn't pull the cable in the car. Let's cut it here and maybe we can get a... Yeah. Pair of vice grips on it here. You know, it, it's probably rusted further back. I want to cut it back far enough that we can poke it through the grill. You know, should be a metal cable in there somewhere. Hey, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, 460. Oh damn it! Someone's taking the radiator out of it. Missing the belt for the power steering. Think it'll roll over? Um, maybe. Oh boy, not easily. Well, let's throw the old double barrel at it here. See what it does. Oh, yeah. Look at oh, that. good. A little, whoop, whoop, little bit of a ridge in there for sure. I think we got to her just in time. That's a couple times in a row we've done that. We need to uh, figure out a radiator and transmission lines before we do anything. The one thing you don't want to do on an old car, JD, when you get it started for the first time, Make sure you're not blowing all the transmission fluid out of it because it'll actually make air pockets in the transmission. You'll kill it pretty quick. We found a radiator. Uh, I know this is the right radiator for the car because it's the only Ford radiator I had, which makes it the right one for the car. Why don't we start with removing the air cleaner housing? Get that bad boy off of there. Let's see what's living in it. All right, everybody place your bets. What's living in it? A homeless um, person? A squirrel? A rabid raccoon? No, it's just a holly. It's stuck at full throttle. That's nice. What the? Oh, it's got 7,000 vacuum lines on it. Welcome to the 1970s. Hey, I just realized we need that power steering pump because it has hydro boost on it. There's no vacuum booster back there. Uh, and that means the power steering pump, it runs the brakes. Uh, well, the power assist of the brakes, but good luck pushing through that. Uh, and also, why is the carburetor stuck at wide open throttle? What was this thing doing when it died? <laughs> it is, yeah. It's froze. Apply liberally. Soak that stuff. Hold a can up, right? It'll spray better. Now make sure you spray in the choke linkage. Spray down in the butterflies too. Oh, Mmm, antivirus. Let that eat on it for a second. Yeah. Um, there it goes. See? Good as new. Um, kind of. See, here's our gas. Oh, oh. JD's gonna unhook the fuel line so we don't suck up any trash into it. I think it's safe to assume with as rusty as this thing is in the back, especially those fuel tanks are probably junk. And while he's getting the fuel line disconnected, I'm looking over here at the battery cables and uh, something's had them for lunch, uh, um, along with most of the wiring. Let me see if I can't just put an eyelet on that starter cable there and get it reconnected. Got it off of there? Yeah. Nasty varnish come out of there? Yeah. Ugh. All right, well, we did a good thing there, I guess. I've been looking at the cop car here, trying to figure out where the wires go. Uh, it looks like this thing, the circuit breaker thing, it runs back into this loom with these fusible links. Everything here ends up on the battery side of that. And I'm pretty sure that's all the cabin power and some ignition power and everything for the whole car. They didn't just like cut it in half. Here's where all that wiring is. It's eaten all the way back there, all the way to here. So 
we got a little work to do. Back on the red LTD, so I'm waiting on parts on the gold LTD, not to interrupt the matrix too much. I did come out here a couple nights ago, and I just, you know, professionally rewired the entire thing. Uh, by going off of the wiring of that car, I was able to determine that that's probably what it's supposed to look like. I put a couple battery cables on it. They're done very professionally. We need to get a water pump pulley. So let's throw a power steering belt on it. I bought one of those. I'd kind of forgotten my original plan here. I forgot that I intended to put the radiator and everything in first. So let's get this belt on. Then we can throw a couple radiator hoses at it. Let's get transmission lines hooked up, everything assembled, we get this baby to pop off. One brand new belt for, man, this is just the kind of luxury treatment we give our vehicles. They give forward a lot of crap for their accessory design, but this is a good one. I thought, I appreciate any manufacturer that put a tensioner for their V-belts. It just makes life so much easier. Loosen three bolts, tighten this up, and you're good to go. I gotta change the lower radiator hose. I think the upper one will work. Let's see what kind of small animals were living inside of it. Oh, well, you know, could be worse. Here's my new hose, but I have some easy access to the fuel pump right now. So I'm just gonna run a hose out of there, and then I'll just flop it up here. That way I can just grab it real easy without having to lay down in the muck. Went ahead and cut and plugged the return line, you know, for safety. Got the fuel line stubbed in, so to speak. Now we can put our hose on. You know, this thing's really getting treated like royalty. You know how you give a prisoner really good last meal before you put him to death? I mean, uh, definitely not going to do anything of the sort with this one. No, we love it. Let's slam this new, absolutely correct for this application right here. Brand new. I mean, literally, just fresh off. Fresh off the radiator showroom floor. Fits. Well... It doesn't fit at all. You know, that's good enough for uh, for the girls this car dates. Looks like I gotta shim it up just a hair. So I have my radiator shim here. These come in two by four, one by one, two by two, you know, one by two, all kinds of different sizes to get you in the, to get your radiator in the correct position. Very highly advanced technology. It's organic as well. We'll reuse the upper hose because, well, I did buy a new one, but I'd like to get my 15 bucks back, you know what I mean? It'd be cool to be able to eat today. Oh, mm, yeah. Let's go ahead and secure this radiator properly, safely. That's what, you know, I read all these comments like, Dalton, you just don't do anything safely, man. I'm probably the safest guy on YouTube. Let's take it right through there. I mean, they're not high vis for nothing, you know what I mean? They, these are the safest zip ties money can buy. I just found this piece of hose laying on the ground. So that'll work pretty good to hook up our transmission lines, I think. There's a mud dauber nest built in that line, I just noticed. Better clean that out. Out of there, little buzzy guys. We don't want that plugged up. That would be bad news. Back to this thing. I suppose before we put fuel to it, let's see if it just burns itself to the ground. And that would really just save me the trouble of bringing a boat tank over here and hooking it up, you know. So if it just immolates, you know, I mean, I would be happy. You'll note that I have red for ground for convenience. Okay, I hear relays clicking. This is my, my homemade wiring here um, to replace the mouse eat and stuff is not smoking yet. Try to crank it, I guess. Hi, welcome to my abode here. Hello. It's very nice, isn't it? Yes. Somebody really went to town on this uh, ignition switch here. They really didn't know what they were doing. Oh my. And I... There's something to grab here, I think. I don't really know how to get this thing to crank, to be honest with you. It appears to be in the on position because the the steering wheel's turning, right? And I can shift it. Do we got any... Okay, yeah, so it is in the on position. The radio came on. We got tunes? Not really. Wipers? No. Okay, so nothing else works. Excellent. Do I dare? Oh, no, okay. Oh, I don't actually want that to come on. I'll just uh, jump the solenoid. If the key's already stuck in the on position, that's easy enough. Come on, baby. What on earth is that? <laughs> this thing's making all kinds of strange noises. <laughs> Try it 
tried. <laughs> Alright, it'll run. I'm gonna go ahead and get our OSHA approved fuel system going here. So we'll use this fuel filter to extend our stubbed in line to the fuel pump, which is a complete waste of time. So that fuel pump's never gonna work. Come on, Jag Tank. We're gonna put this at an extra special location. Right there. Precise. zombified, petrified piece of garbage, you're gonna fire right up, aren't you? Huh? Huh? You're yeah. gonna suck some gas up there and you're gonna go vroom and clankety clank and all the good stuff. <laughs> suck the gas. <laughs> Has we got to the carburetor yet? I'm sure that needle and seat's not stuck at all. Yeah. Okay, it's leaking, so maybe? Hang on. Woofy. <laughs> okay. Nope, it's going up now. Well, there's that. <sighs> Okay, well, we have gas at the carburetor. I know this because it's currently pouring gas through the carburetor. Venturis are pouring gas out of them, but they kind of stopped. I hit it a few times. Uh, the accelerator pump is pouring gas out onto all that dried leaves and nuts and, uh, you know, flammable dung and whatnot. So uh, I'll just keep doing this. <laughs> Yeah. Why is alternator no worky? I don't know, who cares? It actually runs pretty good. <laughs> Not bad. Does it have oil in it? Lots. <laughs> uh -huh. I think it'll pull into the shop. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Japanese beetle farm in here? Yeah. Nice. They're just coming out of here. They look like ladybugs, but they're not nearly as cool. No, they're evil. I'm gonna try to swap this wheel and tire off of here. Get her so she'll roll, maybe. It's so muddy out here, I don't want to try driving on a flat. Let me just take that off. I got some tires off of that gold LTD to put on here. Hmm, this thing's stuck on the hub. And, uh, you know, not that my jack's not perfectly safe. I don't feel like getting under there and beating on it. So maybe we'll just soak her down a little bit. And maybe that'll help. Ah, there she goes. Just had to spit on a little. Do the original tires off of that gold LTD there. If you haven't watched that video, make sure you check it out. Didn't realize how bad that one was. It'll be interesting to get these mounted up, but we'll do it. Conveniently, this front bead's already broken off for us. I mean, come on. Can't get any easier than that. I'm sure it'll come off with there. No problem. Looks like it's only been on there since the Reagan administration. Mm, let's try them. Yeah. We go one brand new 45 year old tire much better get her fired up again check that transmission fluid and i guess try to drive it maybe it has brakes <laughs>
dry. Well, it's going to be at least the capacity of the pan low. It's usually what ends up leaking on cars that have been sitting forever. It's just a pan. And typically that's three or four quarts. So a gallon ought to get us moving. Man, this thing's pissed off. car out of the way and uh, it is pouring fluids out of it uh, that's okay though let's just go ahead and pull the fire hazard into the shop <laughs> nicest battery cables I could find in the yard. Huh. Weird. <laughs> I don't know why that would have fallen out. This car is so solid. Well, it's been a couple of days. Can't tell. Mustache is gone. So my whole game plan here is to take all these big cars and try to film a car chase with them. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but we do need it to be better than it is as far as reliability goes so that you know we can get away from the real cops when they show up. We gotta fix that charging system, at least make it work, force it to work, and it'd be nice to be able to shut the car off inside the car. There's a few ways to hotwire a car, right? There's something in the trunk I think could help us fix that mangled steering column. Mm -hmm. There's a whole ass steering column in the trunk here. Will that help us? I'm not sure. Oh, well, it's got keys. That's a start. Not sure if I want to deal with swapping this whole thing or not, but I kind of wanted to look at it. For our purposes, getting to this would work just fine. So this is the ignition switch here. The key pushes this rod here, or pulls it rather in this case. We don't necessarily need to swap this whole column in there because that's a lot of work for not a lot of gain as far as this car is concerned. If we can just access this, take those two bolts out and then we can either break that rod off and just push the rod in the car to start it. I just wanted to make sure that that was how this was set up. That's kind of like a GM steering column. What else is in here? Oh my. Oh, that's going on here for sure. Oh man. I guess we might as well just clean out what's in here first because I'm kind of curious now. Oh my god, there's a whole ass snow shovel in here. Uh, aluminum air cleaner, so that's off of a 78 or later. Another factory air cleaner. I got a stockpile of those. Yeah, I'm gonna keep the snow shovel. You never know when that might come in handy. Four lug, look like Fairmont wheel covers maybe. Cord of Motorcraft 1040, the good stuff. Oh, carb kit, or what's left of a carburetor rebuild kit. Well, what's left of a two barrel carburetor rebuild kit. Well, before I go crawling under the dash of this thing, looking around for the ignition switch, I need to vacuum up mounds of literal poop out of it. I'm gonna put on my gloves this time. I don't know how much rat feces one can ingest before it really starts to take a toll, but I bet I'm getting close, you know? But I noticed this thing in the seat here is a driver's window. However, it doesn't have the little vent window thing. I don't think this will work uh, in this car, or at least with that regulator, but I don't know, maybe it could plug a hole. I don't think that's a green towel. <laughs> chain with a lock on it. See, this is self-defense. That's what this is. Someone tries to steal your LTD and you just whack them. Wiper blade refills here. Those look like new. They are new. Hey, these are worth their weight in gold. The front carpet actually cleaned up fairly well. I didn't know it had the high pile carpet in it. Here's a brake rotor. That is a rear brake rotor for one of these uh, because this has rear disc brakes on it. 
just like that gold one we just did and if it's not obvious it's also a nine inch with rear disc brakes and i think you guess that those are going to end up on something else what else we got in there? that's probably the box that loader came in power steering pump in there and something else but let's go ahead and clean the back up too just so it's not all blowing everywhere when we go drive it Well, I got the vacuum out. I guess I might as well vacuum off all the rat shit off the engine, too. Let's knock that out, and then we can deal with the ignition switch. You got most of the fire hazard removed from under the hood here. You can actually see the 460 in all its glory here. Let's see what it takes to drop this lower dash panel and just try to get to that ignition switch down there. We'll see if we can just manually trigger the ignition. And there's our ignition switch right there. All right, well, let's, let's just get that unbolted. See what we have to work with. I just broke the bolt off. So we are now screwed permanently. Hooray! Just be able to flop it down around the side here. There we go. And now you can simply put a little screwdriver in there and just slide that back and forth to crank the car and turn the ignition off. Convenient? Hell no, but better than doing a whole bunch of work for something I really don't care about. Just button all this right back up. I tell you what, I messed up my wrist working on the assembly line for years. And uh, we're using a hand ratchet a bunch all day really messes with me. That thing's been a lifesaver. Yeah, see, we can zip tie it right there for easy access. Accessory. Oh, well, I tried. Battery cables are dirty. That's good enough for me. PBG, coming up with new and innovative ways to do things wrong. Behold, the latest and greatest in ignition switch technology. Nobody knows how to steal this son of a bitch. Gently push that way for crank. That way's off. It's that easy. I do think I need an auxiliary zip tie though to tie those two together. My invention is perfected with that. Look at that. You can still even use the ashtray if you so desired. Now that we have an ignition switch and we have everything cleaned up, we need a charging system so we can drive the car around without the battery going dead. I guess let's just pull this battery out and the voltage regulator is tucked up here behind the header panel. Let's take a look at it, see if something has, you know, had all the wiring for dinner. Come on, it's a light. Uh, yep, there's the voltage regulator. It doesn't look like it's chewed up too badly. It may not be it. Been lightly gnawed on, but nothing over the top bad. We'll plug it back in. Get oh, that's right. I got to fix the fuel leak before I started. It is horrible fuel leak and a really bad transmission leak. But we'll fix the other little issues. Get it fired up. Then we'll check the charging system. Fuel leak could have been this old nasty gas coming out of the tank, which is laying on the ground behind the car. I don't know if I mentioned that. Probably this return line that I you know plugged really well by just shoving a bolt in it. And this would appear to be our transmission line leak. Yeah. Maybe probably in that clamp a bit where it holds some dirt in there and it rotted it. Problem here was, JD. What? I had the wrong size plug in there, you know? I had a 3 8 plug and now I've got a 5 16 plug here. Oh, yeah. Coarse thread. Coarse thread 5 16 you know? And yeah, this... that'll fix it. See if we can find the hole. Yeah, where that bracket was, they both look pretty bad. Pretty weak. I'm just gonna cut that whole section out and we'll just replace it with a couple pieces of hose. Yeah, something like that. See, whenever you use a death wheel to cut through the transmission line, the uh, transmission fluid actually lubricates for you. It's it's very handy. Just gotta run a couple hoses up there easy. You know you're a car guy when you get confused on whether or not it's blood or transmission fluid that's pouring down your arm. Could be either really and you're just not really concerned. Should I have put a little bubble flare on the end of that? Yes. Will I? No. Uh, now that's a quality repair there guys. God man sometimes you know you guys have seen me do really solid mechanic work but whenever you don't care about something you are free to be as hack as you want. It's it's wonderful. You can kind of see that wet spot there. You really got to watch out for this. Uh, with those metal brackets on the frame that these old cars like to use, they will hold dirt, salt, and all that stuff. And whether or not this is full of oil or not, 
it'll eat it from the outside in. I've relocated the jag tank to the trunk, which I uh, forgot to vacuum out, by the way. But we'll just ignore that for now. You know, I feel like we should probably route the fuel hose differently, but not to worry, I have a brilliant strategy. Feed the fuel hose through this razor-sharp hole in the firewall, directly into the interior of the car. See, that's for safety. Just simply retrieve the fuel hose from the dash. I've made quite the rat's nest in there. We got the split bench. You see, so we just wrap this. Got leaking gas all over the interior. Yeah, took it right here between the armrest. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like. Actually, this whole thing deletes fairly easily. Oh, look, there's the hole we need right there. Uh, that was factory. Factory design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there we are. Like it was made for it. Next step will be deal with the charging system. I found this wire on the alternator uh, just kind of hanging out, doing its own thing here. So maybe I need to look up a schematic. We had like 10,000 vacuum leaks. Let's get the vacuum leak straightened out. Let's give this thing the best chance it's got. That's a vacuum leak. That's a vacuum leak. That's a vacuum leak. That's not hooked up. Uh, modulator valve's not hooked up. And then this big hose runs into this T, which has um, a vacuum leak. Got all those plugged correctly. And I'm just nice. Did a great job at it, if I do say so myself. <laughs> now we can finally test the charging system. Need to make sure we have power on the alternator for one. Make sure it has a direct line back to the voltage regulator. Then we need to check power out of the voltage regulator and power to the voltage regulator. Let me make sure the key is on. The key is on. The radio is playing. I have battery voltage on the regulator. I know I have a complete circuit from the regulator through the alternator because it has continuity. So that part of it is functional. What we don't have, we don't have an exciter. We should have 12 volts. On I think the S terminal down there. I've been looking at some diagrams here. They're not the clearest thing in the world, but it would appear to indicate that. So I know you can't see what I'm doing here. I just grabbed a wire off of the battery. Here, pulling the regulator in. So I suspect if we do that, it'll charge. But the only way to find out is to start it. And then I'm going to watch my meter and see if we go from 12 to 13 volts and tells me it's charging. Wow, this thing runs horrible. I've seen about 14, 15 volts, so I jumped to the regulator, so that means the alternator is perfectly good. It means the regulator may be good, but what it basically means is we need an ignition power source to go to it, or a toggle switch, or something like that, just so we can turn on the charging system. Well, let's see if anything on this fuse block has keyed power on it. Whatever that accessory fuse is, has keyed power. Uh, let's try to steal it. I'm sure it's not important. All right, plug that in with a very, very quality installation, as you can tell. It's almost as good as the rest of the wiring. Let's see if it works. I guess we'll test that some other time. I think that accelerator pump has reached its point of no return. It will not squirt enough to run this thing. Uh, now we have a giant fireball waiting to happen. I think I get away with probably just throwing a pump in it. Let me pop it off of there and see if I got one. Guys, you gotta be shitting me, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, how did I not notice that? I swear other YouTubers would just cut that out, you know? Make it look like, oh yeah, nothing was ever wrong with those. I'm going to show you, I'm just kind of dumb. Not only did I miss that, but they were probably arcing all over that fuel-covered intake. 
But you know what? Stuff happens. And if you think it doesn't, you probably have never turned a wrench in your life. I don't know why it wouldn't arc across that. I mean, you figure it'd just jump right across. But... Now, this is what you call a colossal waste of money. But on Holly's Clarence, holly.com, go to their Clarence section. I go there quite often. I picked up these Mallory Sidewinder plug wires for, I believe, $15. I got like 10 sets of them. And I don't have enough spare wires to make a set for this thing. And these are the correct end, the socket style end. So I'll just use these. I mean, the guy couldn't buy a set of cheaper wires. Hell, there's probably 20 horsepower here. Well, that looks stupid as hell, but it should run a lot better. All right, now let's finally get that carburetor off. Oh, neither clamp was tight. Extra cool. Man, we were really playing with fire this time. Literally. Hopefully we can save the gasket. I'm really trying not to spend any money on this, you know. That's what regular guys do whenever they're just trying to get like a donor engine running, you know. We don't spend like $50,000 in sponsored parts on it. We just, you know, get it to run. There we are, one 600 Holly. I believe that is a factory carburetor, or a factory replacement carburetor. You can see here, instead of the uh, instead of the adapter plates that we use today, they use this gasket, which effectively adapts from spread bore to this. That spread bore was the Motorcraft carburetor. The uh, factory Motorcraft carb with a spread bore, and they are terrible. That's what's on the other LTD, the cop car one we did. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Just in case you're wondering, no, a Quadrajet won't bolt to this. Not all spread bore carbs are created equal. Here's a Quadrajet carb gasket, and we can see that the bolts are further inboard on the quad. If you wanted to see a complete carb rebuild, you're not going to see it here, mostly because I'm lazy. We know the accelerator pump's leaking. You know, the rest of the car seemed to work okay. I have here several other 600 Hollies. I could tell that I've rebuilt a couple at one time or another because they have the green gasket in it, the one that's ethanol proof, whatever, nitrile. Are they any good? I don't know. I don't remember. They've been sitting around forever. I'm going to pull the accelerator pumps out of them until I find one that looks like it'll work. This one looks like it's been on fire, so this would be a good candidate, I believe. I don't know. It's got some ethanol in it. You can see that powder. That's that's ethanol, crabby corrosion buildup. It's probably better than what we got, but that's your accelerator pump diaphragm right there. It fills with fuel, and you when you push the gas, it forces fuel up through an orifice in here. Let me see which one of these has the best looking one in it, and we'll just rob that one. I'm like a bandit for cars. I just steal from them and give them to other cars, like Robin Hood. Yep, it's completely dry, flat, doesn't move at all. It's junk. We just put a new one in, put our screws back in, we'll clean the carb up a little bit, throw it back on, and we should be good to go. Well, our completely remanufactured carburetor is reinstalled here, so, I don't know, let's see if it'll run. And then make sure the charging system works, because that's where all this started. Yeah. <laughs> sounds fantastic. Runs excellent on all eight cylinders. Go figure. And the carburetor helps a lot too. Took a little bit to get it going, but once it got moving, it's it's good to go. We still got to top off the coolant in it, but I mean, it's it's flowing. It seems fine. So I think this thing's probably the best runner of the bunch. I think it just signed its organ donor card for the Torino with uh, how well it ran there, but we'll see if we go driving around. The only thing I could think to do next is peel the vinyl top off of this, and I think it does need some kind of paint job, of course. ASMR this. Uh, <laughs> oh, you do the 
Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, wow. wow, they actually paint it underneath this one. It's got that fake alligator skin on it. Oh, I took the paint with it. Ah. Oh. No, you took the roof with it. <laughs> oh, I got a good chunk of it. Here, take this. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, it still smells like PVC. Mmm. Mm. I've been wanting to do this since I saw this car. <laughs> this feels so good. I don't half ass things, are I? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this back window trim is just going to fall off anyway. Yeah. Yeah, they just. It's completely rotten in there. An American classic, Dalton. <gasps> Oh, no. So disrespectful to the American classic. Everybody count the doors with me. Can you count to four? One door, two door, three door, four door means worthless. Everybody measure how long the car is. It's above 78 feet. Worthless. <laughs> Even my really nice one that we just bought last week. Kind of worthless. I mean, nice car, good driver. Very shiny. Yeah, not worth a thing. That's what the final tops are good for. See, it's not that often you get to see the process of vinyl top rot in real time. It's probably very little holding that window in. I don't really like this blinky thing that's got going on here. You know? And I'm not really sure how to actually hold it down, so I'll just shoot a screw into it. Uh, not a self-tapper. There we go. That's fixed. This thing ran so good, I think we've got to dress her up with some hubcaps. Yeah, we, got eight, we even have three that match. I don't mean to brag, but we're kind of upscale. Now these are going to fly off instantly. <laughs> and i got to restore these. Time for another extreme oil change. Not really. Uh, we're just going to say, yeah, I'm changing the oil. Then we'll, we'll cut back because it's just an oil change. We're going to use this Harvest King diesel oil. Does it have the right kind of zinc in it? No. Does it have any zinc in it? I have no idea. It'll be fine. I was thinking this wouldn't be a big deal. Then naturally, the damn thing is stuck on there. Tighter than a nun's. That's cool. That's cool. All right, we'll do this old school. Stabbing a screwdriver through it. That some bitch is on there. I'm gonna need a big screwdriver. So, I've mangled the hell out of this thing. I haven't had one fight me like this in a long, long time. I had to get the screwdriver on the base of it, and I could just barely get it to spin. Barely. You see that? Yep. Two hours later. Oh, it's an AC filter, that's why. See, you can't put an AC filter on a Ford. It all makes sense now. Let's put some fresh in it. I want to put some antifreeze in it. And then let's paint the car, because those three things go together. Just a friendly reminder that Farm and Home carries this Durex brand coolant for nine bucks a gallon for full strength. And it's about the cheapest place you can buy this stuff. I highly recommend it. Is it pouring on the ground? No, sir. Oh, good. Next step here is obviously to paint this thing yellow and turn it into a taxi cab. Because we need a cab for the grand movie that I'm going to be making, you know. I'm aiming to make like a 10 minute short film with a car chase, basically. And, uh, you know, every 70s car chase has a, a cab of some variety. So, you know, what else do you do with an LTD? Turn it into a, either a cop car, we already did that, or a taxi. But, JD, I'll probably hand off the masking to you. I am going to hit that roof with a little bit of 80. See all that adhesive all over it? Yeah. I'm going to just hit that with a DA real quick, just to hopefully paint will stick to it.
Look at that baby. Totally prepped for paint. I mean, I even sanded this one. What more could you possibly want? The good thing is that tractor paint will stick to literally any damn thing from here to three counties away. Uh, maybe two if the wind's the wrong way. Almost done masking. This is going to be a taxi cab quality paint job. You could tell because all the trim uh, that we're going to be painting over. Just like a real taxi, it's authentic. It's ideal. No dirt. No dirt at all will fly out of this. No doubt. I'm kind of limited on my hardener this time. That's my secret for tractor paint is the catalyst the hardener. That is why my tractor paint jobs look good and last, is because I spend the extra 35 bucks on their specific hardener. I haven't had any luck using any other kind other than theirs. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. I'm a little limited on it. We'll see how well this yellow covers. I only have, I mean, I have most of that in there, but we did use some of it in the last tractor paint job, which was the cop car, which you need to, you know, go watch that, please. And we picked up some beautiful New Holland yellow here. I know it looks like poop right now. Just give it a second. You mix this stuff four to one with the catalyst. I'm gonna take it to eight to one and try to stretch that stuff out as far as I can. It's not like it has to live a very long time. It just has to stay shiny enough to look good on camera for a while. Probably the yellowest of yellows. Is that even taxi yellow? I don't know. That, um... The red? Oh God. It's gonna look like the McDonald's mobile. <laughs> you know, if your paint comes with a handle on the can, it's good stuff. Not too bad that time. A little bit of naphtha to thin it. I want it to just just run, you know, nice and thin stream off the end of my paint stick. That's what I'm looking for. That's a little thick. That's good. Always start at a very inconspicuous place. That way, if it's screwed up, you know, you have time to fix it. So the middle of the roof is always a good idea. Straighten this shit up. You don't have all night. Uh, I haven't cover at all. That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, that yellow doesn't cover very good at all. It might cover better here, though. I don't think it will. Yellow is a color that doesn't cover very good, but this is exceptional. <laughs> should have at least wiped this thing off. It is so full of fish eyes, the paint's just running off of it, not sticking to it. You know what, that's, uh, that's not really not my problem, is it? That's the production team's problem for the big Hollywood movie we're making. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, it looks pretty good now. We are running very, very low on paint. Uh, these are my two last quarts. I have a, just a little bit left in there. If you're trying to paint something big with this yellow, buy a, buy a little extra. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even see it anymore. Let 
I guess that's it for tonight. So we got her, uh, you know, covered. It seems like it's drying. It's tacky anyway. Uh, kind of. So hopefully it's dry by tomorrow. We can unmask this thing and uh, go rip it around a little bit. You know, maybe we, we play uh, Taxi Driver in it. Well, you know, maybe not like that movie. Uh, I've returned this morning to this thing, unfortunately still existing. It's not dry, it's tacky, so it will dry. It's just gonna take time. It's because we didn't have enough of that hardener to make it work. The satisfaction there, look at that. All the zoomers love that. It's fine. The satisfaction. So satisfying. This oh. plastic cement on here. Oh, there we go. Stick that right back on there. Yeah, just let it drip. It'll be fine. We spritz this up. You know, can't have the yellow AC condenser. That would be trashy. Oh. Mm -hmm. The grill put back in. If you need to open the hood, you just grab your handy pliers and pull it right there. I mean, really, could it be any easier? I have this cab flag, which says DoorDash on it, which, you know, we'll get rid of that. Paint taxi on it. That goes on the roof. It lights up, and maybe we'll letter it up or something. But, yeah, we'll have a cab. I've enlisted you. The last time I painted something on an LTD, it looked like Patrick Starfish. So, <laughs> or so they say. Well, I think you did good. Uh -huh. Oh, this does not want to adhere. Well, while she does that, I will professionally letter our flag here to say taxi. I went to letter school. I <laughs> right. went to the alphabet letter school. We can draw our ABCs real good. Did you forget how to spell it again? T B T T A C K S Y. Real good at my art nor my letters. Yeah? Yeah? That looks great. Yeah. 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 It's perfect. While Jess was lettering it up, I realized uh, I forgot about the gas tank that's laying almost nearly on the ground. Let me get that out of there before we go driving it. Nice of this thing to almost completely delete itself, but not quite. Tank. I was going to say this tank might be salvageable, but it's not. Not even a little. Damn, those things are really hard to find. Learned my lesson from last time. We didn't strap down the battery. We're taking safety pretty seriously here. So this thing's magnetic, supposedly. Uh, it's pretty magnetic. I put it on backwards. I don't know if it'll come back off. Oh. I don't know if that was magnetism or wet paint. It's the paint. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Taxi. Wow. And lastly, She's totally full on brake fluid, so we're good there, 100% for sure. Needs nothing. Hello. Yes, I need a cab, please. I'm just gonna call. Gotta go pick up a fare. Meet us, Rana. Get in the car. Get in, lady. Do you like? I don't 
don't like that John Lennon. He's kind of a <laughs> Hang on. Don't worry about it. In the demo derby. Watch out for that cat! Oh. <laughs> Stupid cat! Oh hell, I took a wrong turn! I'm gonna bail you for it though! I just hope I survive! You got life insurance? I took another wrong turn. <laughs> On a serious note, I believe the brakes are now gone. Uh, so we will just drive nice and gentle to go home now. <laughs> The brakes are here. Oh. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Everything's fine. Anyway, I think that's the end of this video on Pole Barn Garage. See, we dropped off our fair. She's happy. We got a five-star review because I told her my Uncle Tony would take care of her if she did not. There's no brakes left in the car, so it's got a little body damage. No big deal. We will fix that. And then we will have a car chase. It performed very well. Everything will be great. The PBG Capco is in business. Remember to check out the PBG merch shop. That's polebarnmerch.com. Buy yourself a shirt. Buy yourself a sweater. They're nice. They're very nice. Do it or Uncle Tony will come for you. Goodbye.